setting clear objectives and expectations at the start of the session. In today's video, we're going to discuss how I set up my lessons, my private lessons, in terms of what success may look like and the expectations of the players. And uh, I've been exploring some of this over the past couple of weeks and months now, uh, thanks to a coach called Mark Bennett, and he has a performance development system, PDS system, and he talks a lot about having a lighthouse and what the player wants, what the player needs to reach their goals, to reach their lighthouse. So shout out to Mark, check him out on Instagram, and definitely Google PDS system. So at the start of each session, what I say to my players, okay, what what do you want to explore today? And it's part of their long-term plan. So it has to tie in with what we're working towards. And what do we need to achieve to help us get one step closer? And what I have is a little white book, which you got off Amazon. And in, in the white book, the player writes down some notes. You won't be able to read it there. But it starts off, I'll read it out to you. Um, so the player last night wrote, I want to hit a fast serve. So <laughs> quite a quite a common desire from a player. They want bigger serves. So that's the want. So the, what the player wants to have a bigger serve. And again, this is part of their long-term thing because they want to be a competitive tennis player. So they need a weapon with the serve. So it ties into the long-term player development. So then underneath I put, to serve at my best, I need to dot, dot, dot. And then we talk about what the player needs to do in terms of behaviours because behaviours drive performance. And the player wrote they need to be more confident when they serve. And this is coming off the weekend where they played a tournament and they didn't serve very well. And what they come back with is they, they didn't feel confident enough when they were serving. So she's part, she wants to feel confident when serve. Okay. And then what I then break that down into three little points. Okay. What does confident feel like? What does it sound like? And what does it look like? And they're the three things that we're going to work on in the session. They're the three behaviours. And the player put, it sounds like positive talking. So before the player serves, she's going to speak positively. She's not going to try and speak negatively. Like, I can't. She's going to try and use I can rather than I can't. And you can do this, not you can't do this. So a lot of self-talk, a lot of positive thinking. Then we talked about, okay, what does it look like? And she put making the racket move quicker. So she discussed at the weekend that she felt she was slowing the racket down because she was scared of missing. And we now associate that with a lack of confidence. So she then has said, okay, well, on the, on the flip side then, if I speed the racket up, then that should look like I've got confidence. So I thought that was really good. And the last one, she's going to be 100% sure she can make it. So she's not going to hesitate. So when she goes into the service action, again, she said on the weekend, she felt she was hesitating. She was throwing it up and she wasn't sure whether she, not, she, uh, she, she should hit it. So commitment. So she's going to commit 100% to the serves. And that's what we set out at, at the start of the session. And this little whiteboard's absolutely brilliant. I can wipe it off and use it with all different players as well. And then despite the practices or the drills or the games that I do with the player, all we talk about is those three things. What does it look, feel, and sound like? And when she does it, okay, we highlight it. And if we, and my job there is I watch her behavior. And if I notice that she's slowing the racket down, if I notice or hear any negative talk, or if I notice that there's a slight hesitation, then I might flag it up and say, okay, is that in line with your behaviors that we set out? And then I just get her to reset. But also, if she does something, like if she speeds the racket up, or if I hear positive, I go, okay, that's, that, that, that's really good. Let's do a little bit more of that. And through the whole course of the session, that's all we talk about. Those three things, those behaviours. And what I've found since I've been doing this is the players are so much more comfortable. Because those three things she can control. She can control those three things. She's got... She's got the ability to manipulate or or develop those behaviours. It's nothing outside of her control. And from looking at Mark's stuff and going through his course, like it, it's so true. Behaviours affect everything. Behaviours drive performance. And performance, I think Mark says it, performance is not an outcome. It's, it's, it's a mindset, it's a behaviour. And I, I've been doing that at my plays recently, and, and it works really well. 
and it takes a bit of time to get it set up because when I first started doing it again a lot of it was stock answers players just telling me technical stuff that they need to do better they need to work on the grip they need to do x y and z but after a few weeks and now a couple of months the players are starting to think more about behaviors which is which, which is great uh, before that might have been useful as a as a little sunday tip and video for you um as always check out mytenniscoaching.com head over to my tennis coach academy uh, and if you want to sort of see me coach full sessions with these players use this approach uh, lots of videos in the academy on that as well. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon.